Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our business meeting this evening. Good evening. Call the meeting to order to a 1.02 declaration of a quorum. I believe we have somebody that we need to excuse. Uh, first, I would like to move that we excuse Vanessa Pimlock. Second. Oh, sorry. Second. Yeah. Second. All right. Ms. Lever Jones? Yes. Mr. Garden? Yes. Ms. Lonis? Yes. Dr. Thomas? Yes. And I also vote yes. Motion carries. Moving to 1.03 adoption of the agenda. Move we adopt the agenda as presented. Second. Dr. Thomas? Yeah. Mrs. Lonis? Yes. Mrs. DeGarden? Yes. Mrs. Glover Jones? Yes. And I also vote yes. Now it is time for 1.04, Pledge of Allegiance. I believe we have some wonderful special guests this evening from Ireland that would I would love to have us lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. So come on down. Bell, just to talk for a minute kind of about our process for planning for summer school. 
Yeah, so in March, we started out with identification of students. And so we prioritized certain groups of students um, who received tier three um, interventions with us, students um, that have an IEP, also students that are English language learners, um, students like Mrs. Connolly said who might have had some attendance issues with us during the year, students also returning from virtual, um, virtual classes, um, and students who were on reading plans. Our communications with families started in March during uh, parent-teacher conferences. We, we approached families um, that we would have liked to invite, talked to them about that during the conferences, and then we also followed up with many, many, many phone calls. And it became kind of an all hands on deck to make sure that the families that we were inviting actually filled out the paperwork and um, got processed in time and got everything set up in time so that they can start summer school um, and be successful. Um, then in April, we um, determined groups and interventions. So we looked at um, uh, student data, the most current student performance data, like the bar reading sets that they were in, looking at their intervention data, looking at their math data, to make sure that the groupings of students made sense and, um, and got their needs met during summer school. Um, then in May, we did some staff trainings, which included logistics and curriculum professional development, too, for teachers, um, especially using our um, collaborative classroom materials. And um, it also included organizing and getting all of our materials organized for students and adults. Seeing as though our, our session was held at Wyland, um, it involved quite some planning and organization on our teachers' part to make sure that all the materials got to the school in time and got unpacked and, and computers were delivered and that students had what they needed to learn on the first day. Um, so it was, it was fun. It was a fun experience to be in another building collaborating with you know, another school, another set of um, administrators. I think that was nice for us to, um, to thought partner on certain things. And um, we had a total of 122 students who enrolled in summer school. We invited many, and that's how many we ended up with in our program. So this may will share a little bit about what happened during the uh, day in terms of instruction. So we started the morning with reading instruction. Um, and the way we did reading was we, um, Look at the kids' bar sets and where they were, and they actually move on. Um, so um, you may have to do a sign to my class, but you're going to sign to this board for a reason. We use um, the bar sets. Um, we also use um, I ready. So I think it did a lot of tingling with the kids and independence. When I'm working with the reading group, you need to be responsible for your learning. Um, I have to work with kids sleep early, and they work really, really hard this year. Um, our goal was that, that they came in at a bar six when they left, they had, they had caught up at least a year. Um, my kids, I had 17 kids, I think 67% of them moved in a time of the year in their reading, um, which is a really big deal because it helps them um, continue on. So at the end, we sent that reading data back to the schools, and so those students started that new level. So, Ms. Um, Bank, to make I'm sorry, to, to make a year's worth of growth in <coughs> six weeks in the summer is significant. Is that what do you What do you like attribute the most leverage to? Um, one, the bar sets, small group sizes, and really the students really buckled down and focused with their um, centralized I ready and the interventions, and um, really the teachers put it together and said, you know, this is what we want to see them grow. And, um, just, just yeah, the kids really were, but some of them we had some who were really dedicated and they worked really hard. Um, I think the ones that didn't make that growth was half uh, absentee, they, they didn't come to school or they were late or um, just different things like that. We just didn't put in the effort. But it was some really good turnout for the students. And I think, the can I just jump in? Mm -hmm. I think to clarify too, so a lot of that growth was measured through IXL, but with being a leader, they followed the program, and so six weeks of um, IXL puts you through about a set. And it depends on which grade level you're at, which set you're at, um, kind of what that equates to in terms of, of grade level. So, for example, um, 
sets one, two, and three are really like a, a kindergarten level. Sets four and five are first grade level, so you can see it's not like people be distributed by grade level, if that makes sense. Um, so every student participated in the six weeks of instruction, which, which boosted you up um, one set level, but a lot of that measurement came from IXL. The math, oh, it's one of my favorites, we use um, Zern, Fish Tank, um, and there's, a, there's one program called Zern, that one called Fish Tank. And what we did is we, again, collected data from all the teachers, what skill uh, <coughs> does, does your child need? And we took that, so if they have multiplication issues or they have effective fractions, we took that and we divided the kids by skill level. This set of kids needs fraction, this kid, these kids need addition and subtraction. And again, we split, they were in my homeroom, but when it's time for that, they split up, went to different teachers. So my high taught Zion and Fish Tank are really, really loved. <laughs> fish Tank was really fun. Uh, it was really engaging. So it was um, very specific to fractions. I had a group of kids with, with uh, fifth graders that were going into sixth grade um, that were struggling with fractions. And that was a very explicit teaching by the end of the summer all of those kids were able to pass a pretest that they averaged a one out of 10, I think it's the question. They were all able to get 10 out of 10 when they took it at the end of the summer, which was a really nice book to see them focus on that one skill that they really needed to boost them over. And then again, they gave them that confidence. And then, of course, we want to support both the child while they're at summer school. So Mr. Pierce will talk a little bit about the social-emotional side of learning. Like Mrs. Scott said, we talked about really more to kind of support the entire child, the whole child throughout the summer. So this really gave us a really awesome chance to do so. And so we had some different things that we did to really support the whole child. Um, one thing I think that we really do well with her is that like we're more than just brick and mortar buildings. We're like a community, we're a family. We really kind of hone in on that uh, community and that family-based atmosphere by bringing in different events. Like on Fridays, we do like these fun little events. And it makes it like a fun little event to most people, but to our kids, it was a reason to come. It was that build that character to see everyone like a Hawaiian shirt for that day or that week. It just it made that it really helped foster that sense of community that we that we really pass off at in right here, um, what we stand upon. Um, we had some really cool and then we had some really cool um, opportunities to kind of for the um, for some of our students to, to engage in other ways as well. We had some therapy dogs that, that they uh, got to come in and kind of see some therapy dogs, which is kind of cool. Some of the kids were a little bit scared, um, but some kids were really kind of um, enthusiastic about that. Just a, 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 some different ways in which we were able to meet the children where they were at and really build some of those social emotional skills. <laughs> and then also um, we had a, a one school counselor um, per building um, this summer, and so that was really cool to really work with some of those kids, um, so, some of those social emotional skills that the kids are still working on. Um, we had a couple kids in summer school that were, they had a hard time in the school year, uh, you know, finding that rhythm, finding that balance, and then, you know, coming to summer school with a kind of smaller class size, a little bit more individualized attention, we were able to really hone in some of those social emotional skills, really work with them on, maybe we had one child who really needed to, he had a little bit of work on trying to figure out how to, you know, regulate some of those emotions and stuff like that, and we were really able to hone in some of those skills. And I think that's what of this year is victory happens in the classroom. And what we're really able to do is once we get those kids um, able to establish those skills, those social emotional skills, we've seen them have a really good summer and transitioned into a really good start to the school year. And some of those kids that were maybe going a little bit lost last year um, have seen really great successes this year um, due to the fact that we were able to really hone in on some of those social emotional skills and support the whole child um, during the, the summer setting. So before I turn it over to our students and, and let them share their thoughts and opinions about summer school, I did just want to shout out to um, Lauren Hager, who is an international server at Wyland, who served as the lead teacher, teacher for both of our schools. Um, like Ms. Bell said, it was really great to collaborate with another building and you know learn how different buildings operate and just learn from each other. So I want to shout out to the Wyland staff as well. And to our island teachers, we had actually 10 island teachers who came and talked summer school. And then, of course, Mr. Pearson was there with us as well. Um, so it was a really nice um, collaboration between the two buildings <coughs> and, um, you know, a really enjoyable way to spend our summer. So I am going to turn it over to Wyatt and Journey. I told them that I would ask them some questions because I think they're a little nervous. But can you guys tell us, um, did you like summer school? Let's start there. Yeah. 
So what was the best part about summer school? You don't talk loud and proud. What was your best part, Journey? Yeah, I got to do math and reading. Do you feel like you got better at math and reading? Yes. And how do you know? Why, what about you? Did you enjoy summer school? Yeah. Tell me some of your favorite parts about summer school. Ready. <laughs> We've been laughing all week because we've been practicing a little bit. And why is our I ready guy? You want to tell everybody what I ready is? They may not know. What's I ready? Where do you do I ready? You do it on the computer. And did you do math or reading or both? So out of those fun kind of activities that Mr. Pearson said, did you have a favorite one that you guys did? Yeah. Which was your favorite? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what were some of the activities? Can you tell us what one of the activities was? So, you know, we had uh, summer school, two buildings going into one. Uh, we knew there would be some challenges with that. Um, like from your perspective, being a close part of summer school, is that something we should consider doing again? Is it something we should stay away from? What are your thoughts about funneling two buildings into one school in the summer? I don't know if you want to teach you to figure out all that. <laughs> so for me, it, it went smoothly. It was nice to be able to um, Bounce ideas off of another fourth grade teacher and kind of got to do things here or what, what have you. But it was, I mean, for me, it went in very smoothly. But again, I just had I even kids on I even side. <laughs> so it wasn't a whole lot of coming with the, the different kids. I think what I think we learned is there was definitely some bonuses in that collaboration piece. I think what we kind of learned is that building cultures do vary between building, even though we have the same routines and protocols, the cultures vary. So for example, just things we take for granted, dismissal. You know, we have our clear process that we can go through really quickly, but doing it in another building for the first time, is like, wait a second, how does this work? Even when someone tells you, you have to kind of live it, and essentially half the summer school staff was living it together for the first time. So it's more of those logistical kind of pieces that we had to think through and process through and you know refine as we moved on. But but truthfully, like I said, I think we learned a lot from each other. Um, I just saw different building example of things. I think that like it really helped. Like I think Brittner is like already a pretty like small feeling district. It's a very big district, but a very small feeling district, and that almost like helped emphasize that when I got to work with another building at the Comic Con, I would wait, but I got to work pretty heavily with some of the Wildland teachers. I got to proceed them and I waited at them because I knew them and in past years I wouldn't have known them, you know. And so it made that kind of that smaller vibe even smaller for me. And I was able to see my coworkers, not just from my school, but not just school and school and school, but like the Ritter School District. And so I was able to really feel like the district would work with other schools. That's good feedback. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Can I, so I was at, I was the Wyland side of Summerswell, and it was great. He was so sweet. He bought it. He brought us donuts. Like it was just a very, <laughs> it was just a very open community. Of, yeah, it was. I mean, it was wonderful. So and it was great to meet the teachers and being at another school right now. It's just nice to kind of mingle with other teachers and staff from other schools. I I loved it. The only thing I would suggest is, um, it's a lot of work for the lead teacher. So maybe to. Uh, have a new teacher from Island as well as um, Wyland or however the schools are put together. I'm so sorry for joining in. So. Thank you. Know. you. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said it. Okay. That really is. That's why I told you. I didn't have to be a teacher. That was a lot of kids that have to sort through and assign the class or Do you feel like going to summer school has helped you going back to school? Yes or no? Yes. 
<laughs> okay, and since you've been back in school, what is your favorite thing that you've gotten back to? So in your, in your fourth grade classroom, what's been your favorite thing about your fourth grade classroom? Okay. Have you got to do some of the I so you know how you felt about I read it, have you got to do that again in fifth grade? You feel like now it's easier now that you did I read it? Kind of. <laughs> so you like the I read. I can honestly tell you when I was in school, recess was my name. <laughs>
Thank you, Dr. Alvin. So board members, we'd like to recognize our friends at the Rittner Coke Care Food Pantry. Uh, Ray Bear was to be with us this evening, but was unable to uh, join us, as was Angela Gobble. She's the president of the board uh, of the Coke Care Pantry, which is a separate 501c3 that we partner with, um, to address food security in the Rittner community. So under uh, Ray's leadership, as well as uh, Angela and the board, uh, the food pantry is serving more families than ever. It's grown to the second largest pantry in the county. Uh, just this past week, uh, they hit a high in terms of customers served. 138 uh, families were served uh, in that week. Uh, so a yeah, significant number of, of uh, significant 138 families in one day serving more than 500 families uh, in a week. So the capacity is certainly grown because they have volunteers, they have the space um, to address in their mission the toxic stress that comes with uh, food insecurity. So in order to access the pantry, which is at the Husky Support Center, families must live within the written boundaries. Uh, it's in the Husky Support Center. Uh, all donations uh, to the pantry are, are needed and appreciated. Uh, the pantry is very financially secure. They're very uh, sound financially. Dwight uh, serves as the treasurer of the pantry. He's on the board. Uh, one thing the pantry could use right now is more volunteers. Uh, a, number of, uh, a number of volunteers are uh, of an advanced age, and so a lot of the heavy lifting that's um, required sometimes with some of the shipment of food, some of the shipments of food, uh, some of the volunteers, um, they could use some assistance with that. So if you could help to get the word out, that'd be great. Uh, our theme for this year, as you heard it from uh, Mr. Pearson, is the victory is in the classroom, making sure that we're focused on achievement for every child. Uh, align, uh, in line with that theme, uh, as a district, we've always provided those wraparound supports and structures um, to make sure that there are no obstacles to every child achieving in the classroom. Uh, board members, I think you should be congratulated and, and, and appreciated for your leadership in making sure that we created a sustainable future for the pantry because if you remember uh, about four years ago, uh, the future of the pantry was not at all certain and they were within two months of closing their doors. But with moving forward with the Husky Support Center, we've guaranteed their future and there's very strong leadership in place right now. So something we should all feel very good about. Please my report. Thank you, Dr. Kilbride. I'm moving to 2.03, student representative report. Mr. Terrence Clarkson. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, board members. Uh, first report, so very. Um, <clears throat> uh, I've mentioned, noticed that uh, I went and the schools were together, uh, learning like that, um, collaboration. Um, so that was on my agenda to also visit schools with uh, Dr. Kilbride to discuss, uh, to get uh, a glance at uh, what other environments are besides right in high school. Um, I also will be meeting with clubs and activities um, to see how their perspective are, are about um, the building and improvements or positive things that we can continue with. Um, beginning of the school year has been very peaceful, um, peaceful transition in. I noticed uh, last year there was a very long line of people waiting for schedules. This year that has not been an issue. Um, I think that prayer goes to our counseling department for those who help um, get our students ready for classes. Um, there's been a large amount of engagement in sports. Um, I think that is great for us to connect outside of the classroom, outside of the building, just to uh, be with one another as a community, as Rainer is a nice community. Um, I use our requirement for students to enter into the building if they are targeted. Um, I think that is very positive for us as a safety issue um, that has been addressed, so I appreciate that being um, implemented. Um, join us for homecoming on September 19th and 24th. Uh, we'll be celebrating um, and then our parade. Look forward to seeing most of you all, if not all, uh, there. Um, so the Governing Council meeting is coming up on September 19th at 7 p.m. And our PAC meeting is coming up September 20... No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let Rob talk about PAC. 
So just a couple of things on that. Um, so SSD pack, that's the SSD pack for SSD is having a family engagement barbecue next Wednesday, the 14th. So if there is anybody, please let me know in advance and we need to be sure that we get the numbers to them for food. Um, the that art that? pack, where is that? Pack? That would be held at SSD. At their, um, can you give me an address, please? <laughs> I know where it is. I can drive there yeah. without thinking about it. I just don't know what that address is. <laughs> um, and then, so due to the HEAC issues at uh, the administrative building, we are canceling the September PAC meeting and we'll um, get hit the ground running in our October. So due to the HEAC, we just decided it was better than trying to rearrange and finagle all of that. Um, and then I want to also let, the, let you guys know that we just completed the this special school district does every four years their public review committee. I sat on that committee this time, and I want to give a shout out to special school district and Dr. Keenan. One of our recommendations was to create a kind of a new leadership team. That so special school district is governed by the governing council. They're governed by the board of education, and then the parents of the advisory committee. And so we had for a long time felt like three different groups doing three different things and never getting that communication together. And so that was one of our recommendations. Dr. Keenan has jumped on that wholeheartedly and she has, we had our first meeting this evening. So Dr. Keenan and I have been with each other since 5.30. So <laughs> um, we did our first meeting tonight and bringing those three groups together. So um, there's a lot of good things happening in special school district to help better the communication and the services that we're providing here for our students. Thank you, Rob. Okay. I've always making that great connection between Brittner and SSD, so I appreciate it. That's it. All right, thank you so much. So we'll move right into 2.05 MSBA, NSBA reports. Oh, thank you. Yes, right there, Jennifer. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you're the only oh. <laughs> Next time Don't you just sit there and stare at me, I'm not going to say I'll do it. <laughs> Can we please uh, start with the report? Thank you. <coughs> opportunity to share some news and information during a few minutes of your board meeting. We begin with a look at the release of this year's state assessment data, the preliminary results released by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education show some improvement over the prior year, but state totals have not yet reached pre-pandemic levels. English language arts had mixed results by grade level, math and science scores increased in all grades and courses, while social studies showed slight decreases in proficiency. Commissioner of Education Margie Van Dieben had this to say about the results. Districts and charter schools across the state continue to face unique challenges during the 21-22 school year, while working hard to focus on the well-being and academic success of students. Nothing about this past school year was typical. We must remain vigilant in educating our students, and I urge everyone to review the data through an informational lens, using these key takeaways to shape how state and local resources are best employed to support ongoing student success. The COVID-19 pandemic continued to cause learning disruptions, periods of quarantine, and chronic absenteeism of both students and staff during the past year. Meanwhile, the state's Blue Ribbon Commission charged with developing strategies to address teacher recruitment and retention challenges in Missouri is continuing its work. The commission held a public hearing in August to gather input on teacher shortage issues. Among those testifying before the commission was Timpton Art Teacher and Pettis County R12 School Board member, Sean Harris. Salaries are so low that new and veteran teachers are having <coughs> to find oftentimes, not always, a second job in order to make ends meet, in order to support themselves or their families. In April of this year, a survey came out and found Missouri was 50th out of 50 states when it came to teacher salaries and pay. Because of that, we are seeing people leave 
this field, we are seeing people not enter this field because of low pay. It's difficult to find substitutes when teachers leave and fill those gaps that need to be filled. Sometimes when those teachers find a second job, after a long day of working, they go to their second job which takes away from time with their family, takes away time from them themselves to have the opportunity to wind down, and that's not fair. The statewide survey of Missouri teachers, principals, and superintendents conducted by the commission showed strong support for increasing the base salary for teachers for wellness days and for student loan forgiveness. The Blue Ribbon Commission is scheduled to present its recommendations to the State Board of Education in October. There is still time to register for the 2022 MSBA Annual Conference in cooperation with the Missouri Association of School Administrators to be held in Kansas City November 3rd through 5th. This year's conference will include three general sessions, including keynote speaker Olympian Jackie Joyner Kersey, more than 90 concurrent sessions, a one-day education expo, and much more. Registration information is available on the MSBA website. You also can register to attend the 2022 Midwest School Safety Summit to be held November 2nd and 3rd in Kansas City. This event is designed to provide information for those who govern and work in K-12 schools, colleges, and universities, as well as law enforcement officials and others working with MSBA member districts. The Midwest School Safety Summit is presented by MSBA Center for Education Safety and the Safe and Sound Schools Organization. On a personal note, this is my final board report program as I am retiring from MSBA after 35 years. It has been an honor to work for such an outstanding organization and to support the work of school boards and school board members throughout the state. And so, thanks for allowing me to share some time at your board meeting, and so long from Columbia. <laughs>
Every director has one director. Every director is in one district only, where instead of before they were, you had to split between your own fields. So I think that continuing to support that, the feedback we've received from superintendents from you, from the leadership team, has been uh, helping us get better and making sure that we can continue to support our students in the district, to make sure that we're supporting every district in a way that meets their needs of the students in their districts. Additionally, I would like to add that it is a pleasure to work with both Julie as well as Dr. Keel Bryan um, as partners to ensure that we support the special education needs of all students, but also to explore opportunities to support all students within the River School District. It has been a pleasure to work with you for the last three years as we have problem solved um, identification of leadership support um, from the director level to the special education coordinator level, um, but also supporting with those critical pieces um, for our instructional and support staff. Of course, throughout the county and throughout the nation, we know that we are all um, impacted by um, staffing shortages, but we are working um, seamlessly behind the scenes to ensure that we are able to navigate resources um, and identify human capital to bring into each of our districts to ensure that we are supporting our students. It's my understanding that Angie, um, as well as uh, Julie, provided me with updates from the partnership agreement um, recently. And just to um, not take um, too much of your time, um, this year we wanted to ensure that we focus on um, the equity, ensuring that we were looking at those equitable resources, but also climate. Um, what are the needs of our staff? Um, knowing that the past two, three years we have been impacted by COVID. So how do we really listen to them and ensure that we are supporting them and their true need and allowing them to be a part of the decisions that are being made throughout the regular school district, but also in the special school district. And in addition to that, we want to ensure that we continue that piece, um, but we've also developed a goal to ensure that we monitor that piece as well too. So again, we thank you for being great partners. Um, we're always open to um, criticism, um, constructive, learning, growing, and ensuring that we're supporting the needs of our entire um, county, but each school district in the We are going to be meeting with all of the superintendents and the liaisons, and we're going to, and uh, uh, each director will present the partnership agreement, and as in that meeting, we'll talk about all the work that we're doing together. And we're going to monitor this partnership agreement so that we make sure that we're holding each other um, accountable in a way that we're really supporting one another. It's not the it's accountability, but it's also how do we make sure we take every one of our 22 districts and make sure that we're addressing the needs in each district individually to support the needs of the students. Additionally, at the end of each school year, um, our special education directors in each of our partner districts will sit with the superintendent and members of the leadership team to talk about their personal evaluation and to um, ensure that they solicit feedback for growth opportunities for the, um, the upcoming school year. And that is our way of ensuring that we do have voice from both sides to ensure that we are supporting our partner districts and their unique needs. So board members, we know that academic gains for every student is what we're after, and we know we've got we've got work to do. Uh, but I feel very very strong about the leadership that we have in place. Feel very strong about the partnership that we have in place, uh, and I look forward to coming back to you uh, on those data dialogue meetings um, throughout the course of the year to be able to demonstrate significant growth for students with special needs. And I appreciate you all being here because I really do feel the teamwork, the collaboration when I've asked questions, even when we were looking at our ELA, to make sure that SSD was part of that conversation. And so to me, it's like I know that COVID, there's a lot of negativity associated with it, but to me, I really feel like it gave everybody the opportunity to look intrinsically to see how we could improve on our collaborative relationship between the districts. So I definitely felt that all throughout, even though I'm not doing the governing council currently, I miss my, my friends back <laughs> with my governing council meetings, but we have adequate support too. But I wanted to make sure to have everybody come back and have that one-on-one -on -one face again. So I really appreciate you coming here this evening. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or? Just admiration and gratitude. Thank you all for taking care of our students. 
students that need that little extra. I mean, I have not met as, I have not met one SSD teacher that says, well, this is just a job. You know, their passion is very evident. Their drive is, is there every minute of the day. And they, they, they treat every child like it's theirs. And I don't see how we can ask for anyone. And you truly are a very positive voice for a population of students that may not be able to voice their own support. So I truly appreciate that. I'd like to say, I haven't been on the board for a decade or anything. <laughs> so, but I still, I just feel like since the beginning of when I first got on the board, I have seen an immense amount of growth and partnership between the school district and SSD. And I just thank you guys so much for that because it's so important. And I don't, you know, know what had changed or anything. I think you have made a very large impact into that area, so I'm very thankful for that. Um, I just feel like there has been such a big uh, improvement between our relationship with you guys. So I'm just going to chime in too, because I've been connected with special school districts since yes. 1989. <laughs> and, um, and I really do feel like that this is in the past four or five years that we really have come a long way. And that special is very open. You know, it's not a love fest all the time. I mean, we right. have problem solving sessions and we talk about what we need to do, but it's all professional and it's all about students. Yes. Absolutely. So thank you for that. Yeah. I remember my brother talking about starting the governing council and having to go to knock on doors to have people show up to make sure that the districts were actually representing for their students. And so to see it grow from when he talked about it, like you said, in 1989, 1990, it was a very important aspect of his life. And so I kind of hold it right here. So thank you so much. And I think we are ready for a motion. You can go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I move that we approve the Special School District Partnership Agreement for the 2022-2023 school year as presented this second. Second. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Garden? Yes. Mrs. Glover Jones? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, moving to 3.02 Board of Education Equity Statement, Mrs. Evelyn Gilliam. So this is what we're looking at 
now is to have it read like this, to include ability, racial, ethnic, religious, gender, gender identity, class, and traumatic experiences. What questions do you have, or what suggestions do you make? So board members, not only at the board level, at the governance level, but they, um, as we touch on it in our presentations also, we're seeing more and more at the building level. This is part of the conversation at the building level. Um, certainly have not arrived. Don't know that the uh, organizations ever arrived when we have gaps in performance, but you know, I, I feel like we're on the right path. And I think the touch of revisiting the statement on a, uh, a yearly basis is the right approach in terms of the system to get at those more equitable outcomes that we're after because we don't we don't have those in this district at this point. I'm proud of the fact that we have them. I'm proud of the fact that we look at it and it's a living document that we can change, discuss, and use on a daily basis. I don't, I don't want it just being something that's up on the wall that we look at every now and then. And, and it sounds like this is something that's, that's right there with us every day. And that coupled with the other things with SSD and things like that, if, if we could just bring out the best every day for our students and take care of every child, whatever their needs are, if this is another tool to get us there, then yes, let's do that. So, board members, there's a recommendation uh, for you tonight to consider reapproval. Uh, the board always has the opportunity to take this work into a work session if you wish to do that uh, in October and come back, or uh, if you see fit to, to add the additional language around ability in this statement, we'd be making a recommendation for you tonight. It would be with great pride and happiness that I would move that we did re-adopt the Board of Education Equity Statement as presented this evening. Second. Okay, Mrs. Dr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Gardner? Yes. Mrs. Lutness? Yes. Dr. Thomas? Yeah, absolutely. And I also vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the committee. Please. Yes, Go thank ahead. everyone on the committee and thank all the support. Absolutely. Thank okay. you, ma'am. 3.03 SRO agreements. Uh, 
the agreements with the police departments include language uh, that is in line with Richter's mission, vision, and equity statement. And therefore, I am recommending that the Board of Education approve the continuation of the SRO agreements through the 22-23 school year. If you have questions. Board members, if there's ever change to the language uh, in the SRO agreements, if you remember we did some significant work in the last couple of years around revising the SROs, there's no amended or changed language in any of the SRO agreements. There was a question that came up uh, today around the, the cost, like the cost difference between St. Anne and St. John. Do you want to speak on that, Mr. Smith? Sure. So, so uh, St. John provides one officer uh, for Ritter Middle School. And we, uh, the Richter School District, pays half of that uh, salary, the total salary, and uh, that's $50,000. Uh, St. Anne has a different structure uh, for how they want to provide officers to the school district. And so we pay half of two officers, uh, half the salary for two officers. Another officer is paid more on an hourly basis, and then they donate a third officer or a fourth officer to, to the district. And then um, Breckenridge Hills provides their SRO free of charge. Uh, that is through a grant that Breckenridge Hills have received uh, for safety and security. Uh, and so that officer is completely free to the district. Thank you. Thank you. How about we move and, uh, and approve the continuation of the St. Anne St. John and Breckenridge Hills SRO agreement for 2022-2023 school year? Second. Is this Dr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Gardner? Yes. Ms. Lovett? Yes. Dr. Thomas? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't go too far. 3.04 September construction update. And Dwight's going to join me. So I, of course, uh, having uh, safe and effective facilities helps us meet the vision and mission for the district. Uh, our facilities should provide the best physical environment for learning to occur, and all district schools should provide consistent and equitable environments for learning. <coughs> Uh, we are going to be discussing uh, two proposed projects. One, uh, security lighting uh, at Moore Field, and uh, Dwight will be presenting information on the Ritter High School Fitness Center. So first for Moore Field, um, there are several locations around the stadium uh, that are extremely dark during sporting events. Uh, there are security concerns due to that. Uh, in addition, two lights on each field pole are set up as security lighting from dusk to dawn. Installing LED fixtures uh, in strategically placed areas around the stadium will uh, improve that security. And also, if we install LED on those security lights, uh, we should be able to save significantly on electricity. Uh, those are metal halide lights that burn all night uh, and uh, use a lot of electricity. Uh, GRP Wegman uh, has quoted $51,672 to complete that project, and it is a proposition to this project. And therefore, I'm recommending that the Board of Education accept the quote of $51,672 from GRP Wegman for lighting upgrades at Northfield, and I'm happy to answer questions. Not only is this lighting upgrades, but you know, it's a cost saving measure too, and that's, that's big. You know, and if we do our research, we can figure out the, the life of the LED light is years and years longer than anything we have we put up there. Uh, I mean, they can last up to 10, 15 years under normal use. Uh, you know, and, and all the all the other metal halide lights up there. If we were to replace those, we'd cut all the, the, the light bill down so significantly. So this is 
this is not even a, uh, just an improvement. It's, it's, a, it's a great cost saving. And we can get a lot more lumens out of them as well. So this, this is a very good move for us. And I've noticed that the schools already getting the LED lighting, how well everything's lit which is so much safer. People can see where they're going. There's not the trip hazards of trying to walk around in the dark. But of course, having it up at the high school so that everybody can see what's going on because it's so dark in some areas. So. Got to throw this out, even though it's not up there. Kudos to Mr. Smith taking care of the parking lot in front of North Bay of Hake. It's a lot better. It's a lot brighter. I feel like people could be a lot more safer being out on the parking lot without having to walk around with a flashlight to see where they're going. It makes a heck of a difference. And I do appreciate that. So, I would recommend that the Board of Education or the Ritter School District accept the quote to $51,672 from GRP Wakeman for lighting upgrades at Moorfield. Second? Second. Spark. Mm -hmm. Ms. Clover Jones? Yes. Mrs. Degarden? Yes. Mrs. Lonis? Yes. Dr. Thomas? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you. All right, so I would like to discuss the fitness center here at the high school. We've been doing uh, work on this design. So I'll try to uh, orient everyone. This is the front of the building uh, along the main driveway of the school and this is the entrance where it says above it it says gymnasium these are the steps that go up to the old gymnasium so this is between the new entrance that is over here and the pool entrance that is over here uh, this is the old air uh, the old <coughs> kitchen and cafeteria from long ago that we've been using for custodial and maintenance uh, storage for a number of years now and this back here is the current weight room area as well as some storage that used to be locker rooms and there's some uh, or locker rooms here lockers back here and uh, I'll, I'll go into more detail uh, but is everybody everybody's clear on where we are okay so this is again the current weight room um, you come in these doors right here and this is the main part of the weight room now. This would be the training area. So we have a trainer uh, full time. And this would be the training area. Uh, includes a closet, includes a bathroom in this area. Otherwise, it's very open for the trainer to use. This area back here would become the new custodial and maintenance area for storage and use. And then over here, we've we are doing some renovations to these showers and, and restrooms for an adult locker room. This would serve uh, various purposes, one for visiting officials, another would, uh, these would be two all gender dressing rooms and showers, and these would be all gender restrooms back here. So it can also be used by coaches, uh, teachers, and um, actually we could open up the fitness center to all staff for a wellness uh, where they could exercise uh, even before school and they could use this area back here also. Um, any questions on this part of the building? Okay. Going into the actual fitness center again, this is the front of the school. The idea is to open this area up now. There's just two doors here on the inside with the ticket booth there are two doors on the outside. We want to bring more glass in both of these to open up and bring more sunlight in, um, as well as create a couple of all-gender restrooms back here. Um, this would be the main fitness area. We'll look at it in more detail later. This would be the main fitness area. This would be the cardio area with electronic uh, cardio machines. We do have some storage over here as well as the restrooms. And this would be the main door coming from the hallway into that. So this is the actual uh, design layout and color layout um, that we have come up with right now. Again, this is the front of the building. 
This would be the main door that you would enter into the fitness center. And you can see that uh, the big athletic R, the Rittner, the R's on, on this part of the floor, and then all of this equipment will be mainly orange. Some of it will be black as well, but mainly orange. And it will contain a band branding with either the R, the name Ripper, or Husky Huskies, or a Husky Head. On this side, we will have branding all along this wall. Uh, not exactly sure what we're going to have yet, but it will have branding. This area has a window and the door, and then this area will be a mirrored wall. Uh, because this area here is all the free winds. So this area would be the hard rubberized floor, the black area there. This area over here would again be the rubberized floor to deal with weights. The orange area would be artificial turf, as well as the gray area would be artificial turf. So <clears throat> um, as we went through the design process, it was important to have this area for sprints, for drills. That's what these orange boxes are where they can do the agility drills. These orange dots are a, a different drill that uh, teams use. Uh, this whole area would have um, numerous televisions in it as well as a sound system. These are eight half racks that's used for squats and other exercises with free weights. This area has five benches for bench presses. There's three different uh, holders here for free weights, as well as holders here for free weights. This is a uh, another, I don't remember what it's called, but what I used to call it was a universal gym, so that three or four people can be using those uh, exercises at, uh, at, at once. This area back here would be the cardio room. This, would, this flooring would be carpet, mostly black, uh, gray, and orange. And we would leave the um, half, well, it's about a third of a wall right now, about three foot tall of brick. We would keep that it, all along here. This brick also, we'll be painting that uh, an off-white to keep it light. The ceiling is about 11 foot high in here, as opposed to the current white room, which is about eight feet. We would have gray, uh, a light gray ceiling with uh, sound absorption panels on that or some material, sound absorption material on that. So this half wall would be, or this third of the wall would be brick and the rest of it would be uh, aluminum storefront with glass so that this area could be, um, you could keep this separate sound wise from this area. Back here are five um, treadmills four rowing machines, three uh, elliptical cross-train, uh, cross-trainers, cross and then four air bikes or cycles. Um, this door here would be just across the hall from the training room. So that is why we've made the training room adjacent to the fitness center. We want to make sure we have enough room for everything, but um, everybody was pleased that we could have the training center, the training room adjacent to it. Again, uh, restrooms here with some lockers for people to, to store things while they're in the fitness center. Uh, this storage area will probably be half taken up with HVAC equipment, but this is the layout as we've designed it at, at this point. And again, all we have to do is add some more uh, branding items on the wall over here. So during the process, um, Mike led two steering committee meetings. We took tours of three other facilities, and then we prior prioritized items that um, to include in the design with district leaders. We then had then Mike had two more focus groups meeting focus group meetings with district teachers and coaches, parents, and students. Again, to prioritize those items. Uh, continually, as uh, Drew and Lee worked with the company on that layout we just looked at. They constantly went back and forth, feedback with various staff as they developed that layout and final design review with school administration. Uh, at some point in the, in the process, all of these people um, were involved. Dr. Gilbert
Gilbride, and then myself, Mike Smith, and our architect, Doug Lupa, uh, Dr. Green, Drew Lomas, Lee Laskowski, uh, Dr. Haywood, Matt Schuler, uh, Greg Jones, the Dean of Students, as well as the trainer, uh, five PE teachers, and then these can be double counted, five PE teachers, nine male coaches, and four female coaches, as well as three parents, six student athletes, and then two students that do not participate in athletics. As far as the equipment cost goes, it's uh, through a purchasing contract, so um, uh, we don't need to go out and get three bids. And again, this is more of a, uh, of a individualized uh, design. So this cost will include the flooring installed, the rubberized and the turf flooring, and the carpet in the cardio room. Uh, those electric cardio machine, electronic cardio machines that I mentioned, and then all of the weight lifting equipment. And the grand total of that is $377,800. Uh, tonight, what we're looking for is to purchase the cardio equipment at lead time because it has electronics in it. Oh, I forgot to mention that in the cardio room, the elliptical cross trainers and the treadmills can hook up to Wi-Fi and have that increased um, uh, technology to to work to work on those machines, but because of that, it's a ten to twelve month timeline. So we are cutting it short right now, even uh, on September eighth, to try to make sure that everything is in in August. So uh, a reminder: this is a Proposition S project, and so I am recommending that the board approve the purchase of the electronic. Uh, cardio equipment tonight for $63,900 from Advanced Exercise Fitness Solutions, and we'll bring back the rest of the equipment at some other point. But we can answer any questions you have. I had a question about warranty. Yes. So uh, the warranties vary depending on the equipment, of course. Um, the cardio, uh, generally, it's one or two years on the mechanical and electronic components. Um, there's only one that only has a the treadmill has a one-year warranty on the mechanical. On the frames, those run two, five, seven, ten years, just depending on the piece of equipment. Um, the benches, of course, the pole street is not warranted very long because, of course, uh, they can be can be cut on purpose. Um, but generally, the uh, mechanical items run anywhere from five to ten years on the frame and the mechanics and the bearings and, and bolts, nuts and bolts and hardware. Uh, everything else is about five years. Again, with the exception of Wall Street, that's about, about what it's run. I'm just thinking about the future because I would like this to be always a continuing, wonderful, state-of-the-art facility. Yes. And so I know if it's going to be really used, which I'm hoping that it is, by all of our sports teams and those that are not in sports, but making sure that we always have everything up and running. Right. And connected to that, the recommended maintenance on those uh, treadmills and so on, that would be kicking in. Yes, absolutely. Uh, whatever they whatever they recommend, we need to, we need to do. Uh, now, whether that would be our maintenance uh, staff or some athletic staff, I, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I haven't gotten into the, to the proposal uh, that details. Uh, I don't know if Drew or Lee have it. I have a question. Yes. As far as the uh, like exploding area back there, um, how much equipment do they have? Do they? So all those floor scrubbers you see at night, there's about, I think they counted seven or eight that one time we were in there. And all of those have to be plugged in every night. Okay. So that's that's a big part of it. That took up most of the wall, most of the one wall that was in that area. But um, Mike, you know better. Yeah, that's right. And then, you know, the, the supplies, so, so the, the, the towels and the, Mops and, and all of that, they had to store the replacement product, you know, when the other stuff um, uh, is old. You know? right. and so then uh, they also have a washer and a dryer for their materials and, because they, you know, the towels and everything, they, they wash those, clean those, fold those. So it's a lot of material storage and then, like Dwight said, electric, uh, the motorized equipment storage as well. And yeah. then is there? Uh, Sorry, I was going to say, I, I forgot about the laundry here for the sodium maintenance. They have uh, 
mops and stuff that they brought, that they wash. And then we also have a laundry room back here uh, so that um, they can wash towels and everything related to the fitness. Are there tools in that closet too? Because there's still some breaking in the As far as the different top dispensers, there's a little different top on top of the trash can. Gotcha. Yeah. There are tools in there as well. Oh, good. So make sure that space is used, you know, for the What's the brain of the treadmill to manufacture? Uh, life fitness, looks like, but I didn't, uh, I just figured it was a big system. But on the warranty uh, stuff, it says life fitness. Not that. That could be, or it could be advanced exercise, fitness. I, I, I'd have to get back to you on that. Is this a, is this a, do we know, is this a local company, so if we have problems with it, or they, they be out here? Or? It is, yeah. They, they are actually located uh, just on the other side of Page. Um, and so uh, Drew and Lee actually uh, utilize the, this company now for their existing. So then they would then come out, assemble, install. Yes, it includes all the situations of everything. I do have a question. Um, you mentioned that you have a Not in this project. We have talked about um, HVAC specifically for those locker rooms. But we have looked at those locker rooms, but we're not combining that with this project at this point. So I think that's going to be important in this space. I know this is a vision and everything, and we got progress money specifically to do this, but also knowing like if we're doing something specifically for adults in the community to come in, we also want to be mindful of taking care of our students and the student guests that we have come in the spaces because our locker rooms in the high school, there's some opportunities there. Um, so just want to be mindful of that. The other question that I had too was surrounding the um, area and trying to make sure what like the bathroom that's in in the actual workout area. Yes. Is that also gender, are those gender neutral? Yes, those well? are all gender restrooms. So there is a pretty good size of people. And it's how, how did we come to the conclusion? So uh, make sure the majority was happy or? or? Yeah, I worked um, really, really hard on making sure that I was um, reaching out to what, what were the priorities? What, what things did you, you know, did you have to have in this? Would be nice to have and then what are the dreams? So they, they came up with, with those lists, put those together, had everybody rank those together, and then kept bringing that to back to the steering committee and then to focus groups to have them narrow that down so that we knew these are the things by the end of it we have to have in here would be nice and then you know, the dreams. You know, so we were able to get a lot of that in, almost everything into the design um, of, the, of this, uh, of this space. Um, it's, it, it really takes everything except for, you know, I think an indoor swim machine, you know, made it into the, into the, into the actual plan. And I would say that the uh, training room as part of the large room was um, preferred, but there's a hall there that we just can't, we can't do anything around. So. So, you know, we did the next best thing. It's adjacent. It is literally probably 30 to 40 feet between the, well, from the cardio room door, it's probably 25 feet to the training room door. From the main door, it might be 40 feet, but it is directly behind it, and it, all it's separating it, it really is a, a six foot hall. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a narrow hall. But we just couldn't get around that for the budget. 
and for the plan that uh, that has been designed, um, you know, we visited you know several other schools in Dupont, Detroit, uh, and others, and we do believe that this design is going to far surpass what they have when it comes to the branding and the look and the feel. Um, we think this is really going to be stellar. Just I agree. I'm so happy to hear that we have turf. That was that was one of those things that was ranked really high. It was. There you go. We have to. I'm sorry. I do have another question. Um, yes. There's a lot. Been a lot of reference with this space to be open to the community. Can you help me understand what that looks like as far as security getting into this space and where that's at on this particular design? So at this point, it is not. I mean, the the idea is that they would come in the front. Uh, entrance off the driveway when, if and when it is open to the community. So we have not designed a, uh, I mean, what we have designed is to be able to put a counter out in front at, at the point that that's needed, but we don't have that counter in this design right now. So it would, they wouldn't come into the building per se, they would I mean, they wouldn't come into a hallway and go into that main entrance as we were talking. They would go straight into what now says gymnasium, right off the driveway, if, if and when we opened it to the community. And that would be that, that whole front would be more glass. Correct. Right. Oh, right. I. Um, so then there would be an additional cost to redesign or just add this it would really be just to add a counter, uh, you know, for somebody to stand there and check people in. And we just don't have that in this design right now. Because that would, that will also take staffing, so we're not we're not addressing that operation part of it at this point. I forgot one other thing. So as we open up this front uh, to bring more day, bring more sunlight in. The last piece of branding was back here. We plan on having uh, either the big R or a Husky head or something, or a Husky head with Huskies above it, that would be lit up at night. And hopefully with this opening and more glass, um, this would show through the whole way because again, this is gonna be glass too. Um, and hopefully even from the rock road, somebody can see that all the way through is this is the idea. You just got to make it happen now. And actually, board members, all of this, if you can tell, it's still in development. Like, we're at the point where we're nearing completion. But why we're here tonight is to get these cardio, if you approve the cardio equipment. You know, we will likely be coming back to you for the approval of the construction project October, November, or somewhere at that ballpark. And at that point, all of the fine details will be completely ironed out. So we're really kind of rushing to get this to you uh, so that we can get the cardio for the board. So if there's no other questions, do you want to motions? I recommend Board of Education approve purchase of the electronic cardio equipment for $63,900 from Advanced Exercise Fitness Solutions. Second. Mrs. DeGarnett? Yes. Mrs. Lover-Jones? Yes. Mrs. Lewis. Yes. Dr. Thomas. With a caveat. Mm -hmm. I agree with Ms. Dr. Jones that our other locker rooms need some attention somewhere in the future. The last time I looked at the locker rooms, restrooms, and shower rooms in a swim area, they were in horrible condition. So could we, at some near future date, come up with a plan and discuss that. So I'll just remind the board that we did not include that in the process projects. Now so I just want to, I, I understand. Okay. It's, 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 been, it's been something neglected for a while and Lisa brought it up again and I have to agree with her that this is one project, this is one thing, but I think we need to look at other locker rooms and other, other things like that. So we get through this project, certainly get our arms around the scope uh, because the whether it be um, 
the locker rooms in the center of the building or down towards the pool. I uh, can't remember the last time that we've done work around those. We could work to get our arms around the scope of what we'll be talking about. We can bring some numbers back to the board. The right, I'm not looking for it next week or anything, but it needs to be somewhere on our radar. And I mean, to, the thing I, the reason I specifically about the community, because you mentioned it in the proposal, that's kind of how I feel, and I may be wrong, maybe I'm getting things mixed up. I feel like that's how this was marketed to the community as part of, part of that, some of that progress, like a little fitness center for the community as well as for the students, but I'm hearing like that's not really part of the plan now. So I just want us to be mindful that in the space of if that's how it was marketed, like I said, maybe I'm getting my information blurred in my spaces, but I just want us to be mindful that if we're saying now it's not really ready for that or won't be built or designed in that way at this point in time. So like I said, I may be getting my information blurred, but I just want us to be mindful. Good yes, Mr. President, good yes. Can I ask you? Thank you. Yeah, closer uh, to that 2% threshold than any of our buildings have been to this point. Uh, our dashboard at Ritter Middle last Friday was at 1.7% positive students. If Ritter Middle would hit 2%, then they would go mask mandatory for a period of not less than two weeks based on our current plan. Uh, based on the information we have at this point, it won't be finalized until tomorrow. Don't believe that these numbers have jumped significantly over where it is at 1.7%. But if it would, uh, if they would eclipse or be at 2%, then Ritter Middle would be the first building to go back to Mass Mandatory. That would also be on the buses that serve uh, Ritter Middle. Working on a communication, I uh, don't want the first uh, touch to be Mass Mandatory, uh, so we'll be working with Doug Gray to get a uh, quick message out to Rittner Middle families just to remind them that yes, the virus is still with us. Yes, we have this as a, uh, as a procedure if we hit a certain threshold. Um, we do know that there's gonna be some pushback um, to that uh, because uh, really in a lot of places, and, and even me, we've gotten away from masks. They're kind of out of sight, out of mind to some extent for a lot of people. Um, do expect, uh, expect a bit of pushback on that, but it's something we're going to work through in the names of uh, safety for students and for staff. Uh, the presentation is consistent. I do think it's always important to look back to see where you've been to, to uh, determine where you're going next. Um, the archive last year, there were a lot of changes around the return to learning plan. We moved away from uh, quarantines to Isolation of only symptomatic persons no longer were close contacts quarantined. CDC process uh, had changed, uh, went to five days. Uh, if a person is positive, that the person is away from the building, if symptoms improve, a uh, person remains masked four days, six through 10. That is the continued expectation. Uh, we went to mask recommended from mandatory on the 22nd of uh, February. Uh, maintain the trigger at 2%, which we continue to maintain. Um, districts across the county uh, are in different places. There are many districts that do not have a trigger. Uh, many districts that are not maintaining a COVID dashboard as we are. 
Uh, I do think this continues to be the right work in terms of transparency by maintaining a dashboard. It's certainly work to do, uh, and, and not doing it would free some staff up to, uh, to focus on some other things. But in terms of transparency, fear of staff, students, and families do think it's the right thing to, uh, to continue to do. We had been a time where there were some restrictions on spectators at events. Uh, we opened buildings back up to outside groups. All of that uh, remains in place. Uh, we stay in contact with our uh, transportation department. Uh, transportation department, uh, we do have a store of uh, uh, disposable masks. If we start to see rises in other buildings, uh, we're going to have to invest further in some disposable masks um, to, to provide them to students as they need them. So I'm seeking your approval tonight of the return to learning plan. There have been no changes in the plan to do with students, students, staff, and families as is. Do they have any questions? Let's do okay. I move to approve the return to learning plan as presented by our superintendent. Second. Mrs. Governor? Yes. Mrs. Sorry, so we'll get 
move forward with this recommendation. It is challenging. Uh, to, me, it, to me, it's just frustrating that someone says, I will do something, I'll sign this contract. And then they just, the level of integrity there is just at zero. And I'm just going to walk away from you guys to this You know, we've seen it through the hiring season this year. The market is very employee friendly right now. And unfortunately, there are some that are choosing to uh, <coughs> entertain multiple contracts. Yeah, been signing multiple contracts. We've got a week span and then delaying the decision till, to a point that I think it's very difficult for us to fill the position.
to vice presidents and superintendents. We were up to a fine start. Thank you. Thank you. I did want to say um, thank you to everybody uh, at the admin building for adjusting. I know that the Healthy Kids Desert Man came in over the summer right at the time frame where students were registering for school. So appreciate you accommodating, accommodating the um, ask from the team that was on site servicing the kids. I did also want to say that for those who were serviced, over 80% of them, they've been, had their cases closed out. So those students are uh, in the district, they have their teeth cleaned and ready to go for the school year. We had an overwhelming response. Or should I say they had an overwhelming response where we actually ended up with like 100 kids on a waiting list. Um, so I will say that that work that is going to be doing, going, conversations going on with Care STO for dental care, there is such a great need in our district. Um, but just know that the team does appreciate all of the accommodations that were done at the district office and throughout the community during that time frame. Much appreciation. Thank you. So I wanted to add um, a big thank you to the coaches and the athletics and activities group. Um, I have noticed coaches writing stories, sharing successes of all of our athletes and activity participants way more than we have uh, in the past. And so just super excited to see that because when kids see their accomplishments being put out there, it just means the world to them. So I think that is just fantastic. And I notice that it's the coaches that are going out there and really writing those things and putting them out there. So I'm super excited and thankful for that. And then I wanted to recognize our students. You made a point, and I had typed it up too. I have heard wonderful things about our students participating, like coming and cheering on like all the different activities and athletics and everything. And it has just been like a very big uplifting school spirit thing. And so I hope our students keep doing that throughout the year. Um, I have to share one story. <laughs> As the girls uh, softball team was uh, finishing up beating Incarnate Word, the football team was done practicing and they were walking by and just cheering them on like so like loud and everything. It was just really neat to see them going, you know, being camaraderie for each other. So, so I just wanted to share this. I think that's great. Yeah. I think it's a huge reflection on our year from last year to this year and how that sense of community is really building. Yeah. Anybody else got anything to share? Everybody's good? All right. Thank you so much for sharing. We'll move to the consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda items 4.01 through 4.05 as presented. Second. Anybody have any questions? No questions. I did want to say, um, I talked to Dr. Kilwright about this today, just to give a heads up. Julie and Dr. Stewart, I will be reaching out just about the GT program evaluation, just kind of going online in the line with some of our equity work that's being done in the district. We want to get a better understanding of how we're doing that on our, at our gifted center, especially like over the last couple of years with COVID. I know things are different and we're getting back acclimated. So. Just be mindful of that board members, if you did not read that one in detail or if you have any additional questions, I am going to have a side meeting with them as well. So, but second. <laughs> Dr. Thomas? Yes. Mrs. Lomas? Yes. Mr. Gardner? Yes. Mrs. Glover Jones? Yes. And I also vote yes. All right, then we will move to closed session 5.01, reconvene and closed session 6.0. So moved. Second. Dr. Thomas? Yes. Mrs. Lomas? Yes. Mr. Garden? Yes. Ms. Glover-Jones? Yes. And I'd also have, like to have a recess for about 10 minutes. Thank you.